need to have also abundance of energy, what you accumulate. Mm -hmm. So then if you have energy, then you can give something out that will not harm you. Mm -hmm. If you don't have abundance of your energy and you always give, give, you will end up like, yes. like this yeah. and you will sleep more of the day than you work. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, what Master Chan is saying, like, it's like you, you equate it to a battery, you see. You have your own battery, but when you treat someone, you're, normally, you know, even you try not to, you're giving away some of your energy, you see, right? So if you keep giving away your energy, your battery will run flat, right? So you must have a means of charging your own battery, you see? And this is where the Qigong practices come in, you see? right? And uh, another thing, and I've seen this happen often enough, you know, for people, especially those who do energy healing, right? There are some people who are energy, what we call energy vampires, right? And it's not intentional because they are very sickly, they are weak. So when you start giving them energy, they will try to take as much as possible, really. And you as a healer, you are not aware of that, right? Or you don't feel it, they can drain you, you see, right? So as a healer, you also need, that's why you need to understand, yeah, all these energy arts, how you can protect yourself, you know, uh, with some sort of shield. And also you need to replenish your own energy supply, right? So that's why, the, if not the martial arts, but at least the Qigong practices should be part of your, you know, repertoire, you know, if you want to be a healer. I certainly feel strongly about that. Okay, when I was studying the arts, uh, the concept of lines of force or strings, like, you know, uh, in Hokkien we call it sien, right? Which means Shen. strings, yeah. Shen. Yeah, was often mentioned, like, you know, oh, connect the string to your fingers, to your hands, and so on, you see. But all that was quite mysterious to me until much later on, I think about maybe 10 years ago, I discovered the work of Tom Myers, okay? Uh, he's a physiotherapist who created a new theory on how you should look at the human body, you see? Yeah, and, yeah, and fascia, you know? So his uh, technique or his uh, discipline is called anatomy trains. Uh, you can Google that and, and you should try and listen to some of his talks on YouTube. It's, it's pretty fascinating, uh, you know? And so when I found that, I said, wow, this sort of verifies what I sort of knew from the tradition, you see? And again, this is like one of those epiphanies, you know, you have this 2000 year old Shaolin knowledge and you have this modern science meeting together. You see? And what the, the gist of what uh, Tom Myers say, like, you see, is that the conventional way of looking at the human body, right, is a system of levers and actuators, like, you know, like hydraulic cylinders, like you see in a crane, right, you go like that. Yeah? It has a lever, it has a hydraulic cylinder. And that's how most of the time they look at how the human body works, right? You have the skeleton and your muscles, you see? But he turned it the other way around. He says, no, you see? It's not about solid, you know, what they call rigid structures and, uh, you know, flexible structures. The whole thing is working together in unison, you see? It's one unit. It's not separate units. And he termed that term tensegrity, you see? And that is actually an engineering term borrowed by, from, you know, Buckminster Fuller? the architect who invented the domes and all that so he was the one who first popularized the form uh, the, the idea like, and the concepts and the structures using tensegrity where you have tension members that means stretchy parts and the compression parts meaning the rigid parts you see so one way to think about it is a ship's mass right you have a sailing ship you have a mass the mass itself by itself is not strong enough to take the force of the wind, right? If you just have the mass, the mass will just bend over and collapse. And you want to build a mass strong enough, it'll be really big and heavy, so it's not practical. So you have a mass, and the mass is tied down by wires, you see, right? And so it's the wires that help the mass take the load of the sail, really, right? So it's a combination of rigid structure, which is the mass, and the wires, which are the pulling structures, the tension structures, right? So in engineering terms, it's between tension and compression structures, you see? And there's this combination of these two that give the whole structure of the mass its strength. Now, the other advantage of a tensegrity structure is it has the ability to automatically distribute the load, you see? right? So if the wind is blowing from this direction, the wires on that side will become tighter, right? But if the wind changes direction, 
I don't have to adjust anything, you see. The structure takes care of itself, you know. So then the tension on the wires on this side becomes tighter, you see. So he postulated that the human body works like that. So if I apply force here, the force is not only here and doesn't only affect my triceps, but through the fascia and the tendons, it's actually distributed through the body. That's why I can, when somebody pushes me, I can ground that force, you see. Because I'm making use of all the different connections between the different parts of the fascia, the tendon and the joints to actually direct the force down to the ground. See? So that is what the concept of strings is about. Now, according to, uh, well, I mean modern studies now, the whole field of fascia science is only about maybe no more than 20 years old. Okay? Before that, uh, anatomists, doctors look at fascia as dead tissue, you know. It doesn't serve any purpose. It's like fingernails, you know. It's dead tissue. But recently, the last maybe 10 to 15 years, they found that fascia is such an interesting material, eh? Eh? living tissue within the human body. Because it can act like a solid. It can almost act like a fluid, you see. So the fascia allows, firstly, the muscles to flow across each other, right? That's why bundles of muscles are wrapped in fascia. Okay, so it allows the muscles to slide across each other without friction. But sometimes when your body is traumatized, the fascia can grow thicken, can thicken, and they become like Velcro, you know, yeah? And they stick together in layers, and they become like cardboard. That's why you get that stiffness, you see? So that's why you have techniques like rolfing, which do deep tissue fascia massage. And what that does is to loosen the hooks between the layers of fascia and to make it flexible and flow again. And again, the other thing with recent fascia research has shown that fascia actually have nerve endings and receptors, right? So, and one of the key things that fascia has is the nerve endings, the, what it serves is they are the receptors for proprioception. That means that they allow you, your brain, to know your position of your arm or different parts of your body in space, you see? So that is what proprioception means, you know? You can close your eyes and know, ah, my hand is here, I know where to reach for my cup, right? So there's this ability to sense your own body in space is partly due to the receptors in your fascia. So the fascia plays a more important role than what they used to think of before. And the incredible thing is the fascia exists throughout the body. Even in, you know, in your liver, your liver is just a mass of soft cells, you know. And it's a network of fascia that gives it the shape. You take away the fascia and the liver, the, all the liver cells just go bloop, you know. It's like a lump of jelly. You know? So it's fascia that gives your body structure, right? And that's what the strings are. So in the strings, we learn to connect the different parts of the fascia, tendons and muscles together to create those lines of force. But if you cut open the body and you do the dissection, there's no single thing that you can call it. A string, really. So it's a it's a composite. It's formed out of the different parts of the body, okay. And this is where your e, your intention comes in. Is it? It's your e that allows you to sense and feel what is happening in your body, and that directs the different parts of the body, or your fascia, your muscles, to connect together and to work together to create that virtual thing that we call a string, mm. okay. So, yeah, we, ha we have a saying, sorry. Mm, yeah, please. We have a saying that we say, uh, use your mind to conduct energy mm -hmm. and use energy to move your body. Yeah. That is actually what we, are have to, what we have to say in the martial arts circles. Yeah. I re re repeat again, use your mind yes. to conduct okay. energy. It's like one because okay. even when oh. you just say the fascias okay. and the strings, the fascias, they are also uh, responsible to give an electric impulse so that muscle con can contract. So when you energize more your body, by electricity, then you have the ability to maximize your muscle power, and you use your you use your frame, your body structure, and the combination of the muscles and the tendons to use your your complete body system as a unit, so you can generate more power without less effort. Mm. So use your mind to conduct energy, and use the energy to move your body. Mm. Why people have aches and pains is because they are not using their body efficiently. They are not learning to use their strings, you see. Now, fascia and tendon does not tire. Right? They are springy tissue, right? Like elastic. They do not get tired. Now, if you use your body correctly, then the fascia, your strings, your fascia and the tendons are the ones that support your structure. You know, you're upright like this. But 
if you uh, sort of, you know, go into a bad posture like that, then the fascia no longer works and your muscles have to play the role of supporting your body, you see. Now, muscle, fas- muscle unlike fascia and tendon, will get tired, right? So when the muscle gets tired, it'll start to, you know, uh, cause you pain and trauma, really, right? So, but once you fix your posture and you go back to learning how to use the strings properly, right? Then you relieve all those pain and tiredness that you normally have. Really. So part of the things that we teach in Yosho Kong also is teach people how to adjust their posture so that they can make use of their strings, as we call it. And by using the strings to support their posture, then they relieve the muscles and the pain goes away. We can actually use our E and our Chi to soften the muscle before you treat it. Okay, let me explain. Really. Now, when your muscle is sore or in tension, right? If you try to put more pressure into it when you do massage, it's natural for the body to resist and fight back, you see, right? So when it's already tense and you put pressure on it, it becomes tense, more tense. And as a result, you have to put more force, you end up using your elbow, you know, and things like that. Mm-hmm. And yes, you might be able to loosen the muscle tension, but it causes trauma to the patient as well, you know, right? You end up having pain from the massage, <laughs> not just the injury. You see? But what we have found out is that when you put E to your fingers, you can actually use this E to soften the muscle and tell them, look, don't fight. I'm trying to heal you, you know. And when you do that, the muscles actually soften and you use less force to enter and treat the patient. Really. So that way, you cause less trauma to the patient. I think some of you have experienced that, right? Yesterday, you had some sore back and all that. That's what I did, you know. I used the E to soften your tissue and then you can go in and apply, you know, a more deeper physical massage. You are able to reach deeper in with less pressure, yeah. So, yeah, that is a very proper, yeah, I mean, a uh, good thing to do. Lah, yeah. This human body, right, you still need that. Of course, the Qigong will help you to complement that, you see, but it is not exclusive of that, you see. And we have a common saying, you know, Qi will not help you climb 10 flights of steps, right? You can't use Qi to help you climb up the stairs. You qi might help you to bounce somebody, but it's not going to help you climb up the stairs. So you still need your physical, right, muscle tone and your cardio. So yeah, if you want to, like, you know, we explained before, live life to the fullest, right? Is what is the definition of well-being, to be able to live life to the fullest. You need both your internal and your external health, all right? And I'd like to conclude with that. Thank you.